Coach Harmini from the Labore Vikings. Coach, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. And uh, we were talking about you guys before you came on. Such an exciting offensive unit that you guys have. Returning four offensive linemen. Everyone knows about the weapons you have. Talk about how excited you are for this season. It is here. You have one more sleep until game day. Yeah, definitely full of anticipation here. Um, you know, it, it's been a, it's been a pretty smooth off season and, and pretty smooth summer with all the experience we have coming back too, which has made it uh, rather enjoyable. Um, but you know, obviously the guys that you guys are probably discussing there with Aiden Stevens running the show, having a uh, three year starting quarterback, one with his uh, level of talent has certainly made this uh you know this preseason uh, enjoyable and he's got a lot of weapons at his disposal too so uh things right now are, are clicking as as best as can be expected we're you know really um anxious to see it on you know friday night lights since you brought him up can we talk about eden stevens just a little bit more i mean he commits to yale which obviously you got to be doing work in the classroom as well to, to be committed to that school talk about the his work ethic and his leadership and and his ability to not just excel on the football field, but also excel off the football field in the classroom. You know, I think you hit the nail on the head uh, with how well-rounded of a young man he is. You know, he comes from really good stock, too. You know, his dad, Tony, has been an assistant coach of mine for a decade. Uh, played at Kent State, you know, had a tryout with the Cleveland Browns. So, obviously, that athletic ability um, is genetic. He has an older brother playing tight end at tight um, uh, Buffalo. Uh, so, you know, they have uh, quite a, a good gene pool to pull from there. Uh, but in the classroom, you know, he, he just attacks the classroom the same way he attacks the football field or the basketball court or even the track. You know, he just works really, really hard to maximize his ability and his potential. Um, you know, and he kids like him don't come around very often. We are certainly lucky and blessed to have him as part of our, uh, you know, part of our roster. With all the experience coming back, when you had your postseason evaluation, what were some things that you pointed out as a coaching staff that you wanted to improve on this summer before uh, week one came around? You know, uh, I think that last year when we kind of hit our stride, when uh, the young guys got experienced and we got healthy, we were pretty banged up there for a while early in the year. You know, we played Brookfield and Crestview and didn't really put our best foot forward. You know, when that experience and, and, and we got healthy, we kind of hit the ground running there and, and we started racking up some good offensive numbers. The one thing I thought this summer, and especially during the offseason, one of the things we tried to address is getting back to that LeBray football grit, um, you know, stopping the run. You know, we, we've been running the football rather well the last few years, but we kind of, you know, 19, we, we weren't too bad defensively, but I think last year in 20, we struggled to stop the run. So we moved some guys' positions around. You know, um, we got bigger and stronger on the defensive line. You know, we moved some skill guys to that linebacking spot, you know, so we can attack a little bit more. And I think that's the one thing this summer that we really tried to focus on was making sure that we were not outflanked, you know, not out leveraged and, and that we attacked the run. Looking at uh, last season too, Coach, I mean, you talk about that Brookfield game where you guys were banged up a little bit, suffered that loss, but there was tremendous growth from that game to the playoff game where you guys ultimately ended up winning that thriller 55-54 to 54 fashion game. Uh, that growth there was huge. Talk to me about that growth that you saw from the team from that game to that game and the growth you've seen now from that playoff game to right before game one of this season. You know, I think that's just kids and coaches buying into the process. Uh, that can't be lip service. You either believe in what you're doing or you don't. And, and if you don't believe it, you can't fake it in this game. Um, you know, uh, for as long as I can remember, you know, as a player, as a coach for the last 20 years, you know, I, I truly, honestly believe in the process. You know, you're not supposed to play your best game August 20th. You know, you're supposed to play it, you know, November 20th. You know, and I think that our kids really believe that, you know, we zero in each week on things that we really want to excel at. And, and at the end of it, when we watch film Saturday mornings, we, we pick out things we want to improve upon, you know, and we did that every single week last year. And you saw us like inching towards, you know, the product that we want to be. We didn't get there. You know, there were still lots of plays that we left on the field against Wycliffe in that round three playoff game, which is kind of what I think is pushed those guys in the off season, you know, they see what they're capable of, you know, but they also understand what they have to do to get there. We talked about Aiden, obviously he's going to be a big leader for the team. Who are some other guys that you're going to lean on their leadership and their ability to lead 
uh, during this whole season. It's going to be a long one, 10 games now. Yeah, you know, I, I, we've been saying all summer long, we kind of have a three-headed monster on offense uh, with Aiden, uh, Trayvon Drake, and Devin Carter. Uh, Devin happens to be our all-time leading rusher here at LeBray. And we've had some really talented Division One running backs over the years, so that's saying something. You know, we really lean on those guys, um, you know, but I, I think what, what I've seen is an emergence of a dominating line. You know, they have the, the, the ingredients necessary to do that. You know, they're not quite where we want them to be either. You know, we still got some work to do there, but we have four returning starters on the offensive line. Adam and Noah Petri, uh, Zayden Flanagan and Cam Rabel, all seniors. They're all a really tight knit group. Um, you know, they set a bunch of weight room records here, uh, which is impressive in itself. Uh, so I think that we're really going to lean on those guys up front, you know, and a lot of our guys play both ways. Um, I think one of the wild cards, I think, this year for us is going to be a kid named Steven Hemberger. Uh, he made first team all league as a freshman last year, you know, six foot, 210 pound defensive end tight end, you know, and he just plays with his hair on fire. He happens to be a, a redhead too. So it kind of fits the, the mold there. Um, but he plays like his head's on fire, um, you know, and, does a really good job. He's kind of our motor defensively. So I, I think that if we're able to do what we want to do defensively, it will be, you know, in large part due to him. You talk about wanting to improve the program and looking at those films to try to improve uh, week to week and find those things to improve on. What was the biggest offseason thing you were looking to improve on with the team going into the season? We wanted these guys to be as invested as possible. You know, I think uh, in 2020, with some of the COVID restrictions and and not really knowing whether or not we were going to have a season, literally in, in, until a few weeks before in August, you know, having that uncertainty, I, I don't know that we had the total buy-in that is necessary to have success in, in football. Um, so from day one, when we started in December, when we were allowed to start, um, I, I think we really kind of upped the ante for our guys. We wanted them to really understand all the things that they need to do to be successful. So we made it a lot harder. You know, we, we tortured them in the weight room for a pretty long time this spring. I'm actually surprised, um, you know, that most of the, you know, we didn't really lose anybody, which, you know, sometimes is a, is a, is a necessary thing um, in the off season. You know, these guys really bought in, they worked hard. You know, there were lots of, lots of sweat, lots of blood, lots of tears uh, in that weight room. So, um, you know, and, and that carried forward to the track this summer. So we really tried to make the ante as high as humanly possible, you know, because we, we have pretty high goals and aspirations. Expectations around here are always high, um, you know, and that's no different this year, but especially this year when you, when you have the ingredients necessary to, you know, to do something special. Talk to us a little bit about your coaching staff and, and the, the coaches you have uh, that are building this program up. And, and we know that head coaches wouldn't be where they are without the great support system. So talk about your staff and what they bring to the program. You know, I, I, I'm glad you actually brought that up because I've been telling people for years, you know, when I first got the head coaching job out here, it was, it was difficult to get guys to realize how close LeBray is to everything else. You know, they kind of thought that we were 40 minutes away from everything, and that's really not the case. You know, we're right next to Warren. Um, but when we were able to really get the thing rolling here, um, you know, 2015, 2016, it, um, we've pretty much kept the same staff intact. And I tell everybody every time I go to the Trumbull County Coaches Association or the Mahoning Valley Coaches Association, I, I, there's nothing I like to do more than brag about our kids and our coaches. You know, um, I, I am just kind of the manager of it all. Um, you know, I have a great staff, you know, and I think it really starts – with the coordinators I have, um, you know, Joe McConnell has been my offensive coordinator since day one here. So he's been with me for a decade and Colin Dotson's our defensive coordinator, you know, and he's got both of those guys are, are, are so good at, you know, focusing on the, the little attention to details necessary for success that that rubs off on our kids. Um, you know, so I, you know, can't say enough about those guys. You know, Tony Stevens, uh, Aiden's dad's been with me from the very beginning. Uh, my line coaches, you know, Brian Cox, Larry Hoffman, um, and Marcus McConnell. You know, and I brought in a, a pretty seasoned vet. Rick Radich has been with us the last two years, and Rick coached at JFK for 30 years. You know, just having that playoff experience, you know, understanding what it takes to win at the state level has, has been invaluable. Preview this uh, week one matchup with Lakeview. What are you expecting to see from the Bulldogs? And what can we expect to see from uh, your Vikings? Uh, night and day with Lakeview. Um, 
the first moment you put them on film, uh, they look exponentially better than they did last year. And that's a testament to their kids and coaches. You know, Coach Bellino is doing a very good job there. Um, and their kids are buying in, and you can tell. They're excited about football there. Uh, we got a chance to watch them on film a little bit last year when they played some of our opponents. And it, it, it didn't seem like they had that hunger that they now have in their scrimmages. Uh, so that that's a testament to them. You know, and we've been working real hard this week to make sure that, you know, we leave no stone unturned, you know, that we don't miss any opportunities here against a very hungry football team. Um, I, I think they kind of remind me of, you know, some of the teams that we had in 2013 and 2014, where the kids are starting to figure it out. You know, you can tell that their scheme, um, you know, is rubbing off and, and, they're, and they're finding what they do best. Um, you know, hopefully they find that week two and week three and not so much week one. Uh, but I think that, you know, Lakeview, as, as, they're doing a fantastic job. Um, so can't say enough about their kids and coaches as well. Um, you know, as far as us, you know, I, I think people know what they're going to get with us. Um, you know, we're not trying to hide anything. You know, uh, we want to get these guys in space. Um, and if you can tackle them in space, and, and, you know, maybe you have a shot at stopping us. But, you know, we'll take our chances with our guys in space. Um, you know, and I think that what what people will will see early on this year from us is, is how many supplemental weapons we have you know guys like ashton dunbar and jj um jethro you know brogan collins you know we got lots of guys that can that can carry the rock and, and make catches and make plays so we want to showcase all those guys so that no one team can focus on shutting one down or not you know and then obviously i talked about this a little bit earlier we want to stop the run you know we want to force teams you know to go to the air where we have Aiden Stevens back there, you know, we have some experience, uh, you know, so that's what we want to do. We want to stop the run, you know, and, and put our guys in space offensively. You know, I don't want to get your focus too far off of week one, but you are in a very tough NVAC. Talk about the that conference that you play in and the addition of Garfield in that conference and what excites you about playing in it this year? You know, I, I was just thinking about this the other day. I don't know that the league has been this good top to bottom, you know, during my time here at LeBray. Um, you know, Garfield, exceptional Division Five program. We've met them in the playoffs. You know, we played a, a really good thriller with them back in 2019 where it really literally came down to the last possession. You know, Coach Mosier is unbelievable at what he does up there. You know, and they got some talent. You know, they got some talent on the offense and defensive lines, and they have a really good running back coming back. So they're going to present some challenges. You know, um, we don't have them till week four, so we, you know, not trying to dig too far into that now, but obviously first glance at them is, is that it's pretty impressive. You know, and I think that uh, the other team that we always circle on our schedule, something that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure every kid on our roster knows the date that we play them is Brookfield. Um, you know, Randy Clark has been the best coach in this league since Brookfield came in. He's been doing it for 20 years. Uh, you won't find a better coach in the Valley of squeezing every bit of potential out of his kids as Coach Clark does. You know, and they got some dudes back. You know, they got a lot of guys back, especially up front in the trenches. Uh, so, you know, that LeBray Brookfield game will be a war, you know, in October when we play them. We, we were talking about it a little bit before. This offense is so good and so unique that it deserves a nickname. We were wondering from Coach Armini himself, has there been a nickname that he's come up with or that he's heard for this offense that he's like? You know, that's that's an interesting thing, uh, you know, because I'm a you know football guy and I'm an 80s and 90s guy, you know. Um, I. If I, if I were to give them something, I would call them the fun bunch, you know, like that Washington Redskins group that won the Super Bowl with the Broncos there in the 80s, you know, because they, they really like to have fun, you know, and they're always doing those back smackers and chest bumps and stuff like that, you know, when they get excited and, and they start clicking, um, you know, and, and those three group of guys, that three-headed monster, they're really tight, you know, they're best friends, you know, they ride to practice every day together, you know, they're hanging out together, you know, um, so I think that that camaraderie too also makes it a little bit more enjoyable for those guys. So, you know, that, that's a good one. I, I'd like to, hopefully we can, uh, you know, put, put some points on the board and, and, and make some highlight reels here and give uh, all the media guys something to talk about. We'll definitely push that hashtag fun bunch uh, for you guys on, on social media every time you score a touchdown. Um, you talked about the camaraderie and I'm glad you brought it up. Talk about the brotherhood that comes with football and how well, your team really mirrors that image of, of a brotherhood in a tight chemistry team. Um, it, it's really important. Uh, we try to do as much together as possible, you know, team activities, team trips. You know, we try to make that struggle, um, you know, shared, 
uh, throughout all processes through the off season and, and, and the season, you know, and, and playing football is difficult. Um, if it was easy, you get more guys doing it. You know, one of the big things that every year, you know, Dana Ballish asks is how many guys do you have, you know, are your trends up or your trends down? Well, you know, it, it's not going to trend up around here because we make it really hard. Um, and I think in that hard makes it really great. Um, you know, and that's certainly what I was grow, you know, grew up with at Youngstown Cheney. And, you know, I have coaches that played, you know, for Coach McDaniels at Warren Harding. I got guys that played for, um, you know, uh, Coach Angle at Howland. You know, so we all come from a similar thread, uh, you know, cut from the same cloth where we want to make it difficult because we want to teach these kids some life skills with overcoming obstacles. Uh, you know, but the camaraderie is special, I think, when you get a big group. You know, we have a big group of seniors, you know, guys that have been playing together, you know, through Little League and, and through junior high and now high school. So I think that they've they've grown around each other. They've matured around each other. And obviously they've shared a lot of highs and some lows. So I think that when you when you get that common struggle, it really unites kids. Coach, you got a shout out for Billy McCartney. He'll see you tomorrow. He's going to be on the call for YSN for LeBray. He's become kind of the voice of the Vikings all season. Yeah, um, you know, we got some um, McCartney's on our roster. So, um, you know, we, we like hearing that last name. Uh, talk about a, l a little bit of the 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 excitement of a, of a normal, quote-unquote, normal season, a normal summer, and what is it going to be like to get these kids back into a routine? Well, um, you know, I, I don't want to count our chickens before they hatch um, because it seems as though, um, you know, we got a – a, a lot of issues still to confront um, with COVID and, and what the new normal is going to look like in school. Um, but it has been pretty nice up until a few weeks ago. It, it's been really nice. You know, some of the things we kept, you know, like some small group things, we rotate guys in and out of the weight room in smaller groups. Um, you know, we use some of the technology that we leaned on, you know, during the pandemic, but uh, it has been pretty nice. I'm, you know, I'm a warrior by nature though. So um, every, every little change to the routine, um, worries me a little bit, concerns me. So uh, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, things go well and, you know, um, you know, kids don't get sick and we don't get positive tests and, you know, and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully, you know, things keep trending in the right direction. We, uh, we just got through talking uh, to uh, Coach Emil of uh, Cheney uh, football program, and we know you being a graduate uh, of Cheney as well. Talk to me a little bit about your experience playing in the Steel Valley Conference, and did you utilize any of that, what you learned playing in the Steel Valley Conference and coaching LeBray now? You know, a, a lot of the lessons um, – that I, that I was taught, you know, as a football player at Cheney, you know, I carry with me, you know, and, and it, it's really that old adage of, uh, of being fully invested in, in, in taking everything that someone can throw at you and finding a way to find success, you know, and, and I think that was one of the things that I was taught by Ron Burtis on the West side. And one thing that I try to instill in my kids is that, you know, you're going to get knocked down in life the same way you get knocked down in football, but you're going to drag yourself, you know, out of the dirt, get back up, put your hand down and, and keep battling and, and life's difficult. You know, anyone who's an adult, you know, experiences some struggle, you know, some loss, you know, something tragic. And if you don't have, you know, some of that belief behind it, then uh, unfortunately, you might not dig yourself back out of that hole. So it, it's been something that I've carried with. And, and, and Cheney football went away for a while. And, and I'm, I'm so glad that they brought it back because I think having two programs in the city allows you to, to affect more kids. Um, you know, and those kids on the west side, you know, the south side, the north side, the east side, you know, they need those life skills, you know, to be able to battle obstacles and find success. You know, so I'm, I'm glad that it's back. You know, Coach Mill, I think, does a good job. You know, I get a chance to every now and again catch them on TV. And that's certainly a score that I check in the newspaper the next morning, you know. Um, and, and my my colors at Labrera are red and gray, you know. So I always tell everybody, you know, I'm still, I'm still repping the west side a little bit, um, you know, obviously – you know, different school, but the colors still stayed with me. Before we let you go, tomorrow is obviously game day. Take us through Coach Armini's game day routine and some of the things that you go through on a Friday. You know, I, I'm, I'm real reflective. I, I like to spend some time with my kids if I can. Um, you know, when school gets rolling, that's a little bit more difficult. I have three little ones, nine, seven, and three. So I like to spend a little time with them because Friday and Saturday is a pretty, is a pretty uh, you know, jam-packed day uh, or two days for me. 
Um, so I like to spend some time with my kids and, and I get, I, I like to get real reflective. I, I like to kind of zero in, you know, listen to some, you know, music that kind of gets me focused or, you know, uh, watch a movie um, or clips of movies that kind of get me focused. Um, you know, and then I like getting here early. I like walking the field. Um, you know, I like going through the game plan, you know, offensively, defensively, special teams, you know, and I like to greet the kids as they come in too, so that they know it's go time. You know, when we get in the locker room, you know, now it's time to get focused. Now it's time to get your stuff on, you know, and get ready to go to war. Um, it's, it's not real complicated, but, you know, I'm a little old school in that I like, I like that focus uh, to really be there. I don't think there's uh, any doubt, Coach, uh, your experience with coaching uh, the teams you've been with, going from Louisville and now being LeBray. I guess my final question for you, and it's a question I ask uh, pretty much every coach, and uh, I, I like to just hear the answers, but what is your favorite thing coaching about coaching, especially this uh, LeBray Viking bunch? Um, you know, my favorite thing about coaching, it, it's, it, it's really been my dream to be a head football coach, um, you know, and not everybody gets to live their dream. You know, it's not possible sometimes for, for everybody to achieve their dreams. And, and I'm really lucky in the fact that every day I get to wake up and, and do what I love to do. So it doesn't really feel like work most of the time. Um, and if there's a young person listening, find something, you know, do it, do something every day that you love to do and you won't work a day in your life. Um, so that's probably one of the things. And, and, and just being able to interact with these kids um you know part of that game day routine also is fielding phone calls and text messages and emails and facebook messages from former players and, and, and guys that have coached with us over the years and, and just knowing how many guys that have had a positive experience here with us is, is really heartwarming and, and really kind of motivates me to go forward coach one of the things that we love to do is cover la boya athletics including your football team we look forward to following you all season good luck tomorrow and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. We love it.